Hey everyone, Ali Straza here. So this video is going to be about Magic the Gathering and its new set, Ikoria. So Ikoria has been out for a few weeks now, and this video is going to be talking about the companions that came from Ikoria and some of the decks that utilize those companions. So companions are cards that you get to start the game with as an extra card you can cast, as long as your deck meets the deck building requirements. There are 10 companions, and I'm going to spend a minute covering one deck you could play for each one. So I'm going to try to pick decks that you can do well with competitively for this video, so you can pick up these decks and get some wins, but some companions are more competitive than others, so for some, I've just picked decks that seem fun to me. So let's get started. So first up, we have Obosh. So here we have an odd take on a Racto Sacrifice deck that we saw pre-Ikoria. So taking advantage of the Mayhem Devil Cat Oven combo, this deck goes one step further by adding Obosh to double the damage of all your Mayhem Devil pings. Unfortunately, Cauldron Familiar says lose life, not deal damage, so you can't double the cat into the battlefield. But everything else from the Scorpion to Judith will be dealing double damage while the Obosh is out. So the next companion we have is Luris. So here's a cool take on a Luris deck using Cycling as its primary mechanic. So this deck doesn't need any high cost permanence because it gets all of its value from Cycling. Flourishing Fox is the primary threat which can grow large and fast. Most of the cards in the deck aren't meant to be cast, just cycled for one actually. And if Foxes and Stingers don't get you there on their own, Zenith Flare is the best way to finish your opponent off, dealing damage equal to the number of Cycling cards in your graveyard. The next companion we have is Yurion. So Yurion is probably my favorite companion because it can make for some pretty crazy turns, but it certainly enables very uh, greedy and grindy decks, so I can understand uh, some of the complaints that we've seen uh, surrounding Yurion. So Jeskai Luka Yurion is the new hot deck right now. It saw a ton of play during the MFO Weekly Championship. Normally, an 80 card deck wouldn't be very consistent, but with so many current standard sets being out and access to Yurion every game, this deck delivers. Fires of Invention has always been one of my favorite cards to play with, and this deck takes full advantage of the card. Not only can you cast Yurion using Fires for zero, but if you blink the Fires, then you can unlock all of your mana to use for more spells that turn, breaking some of the major limitations Fires traditionally puts on you. So this deck only plays Agent of Treachery as a creature, and it looks to exile a token creature with Luka in order to search out the agent as early as turn five. So it's a pretty crazy deck, and uh, I'm still uh, trying to learn how to play it well myself, and yeah, it's, it's pretty sweet. So if you guys haven't given this deck a go yet, um, you absolutely should. Next up is Kahira. So I've seen some competitive builds of Kahira that run it with no other creatures because that technically satisfies the companion condition, but I didn't think that was flavorful enough for this video, so I found this list instead. So yes, it's another Fires list, but it plays more traditionally than the Yurion one that I mentioned before. Grazer helps ramp you to Fires and can even attack for some damage when the Kahira is out, so that's pretty cool. The deck also takes advantage of the new Vivian and Bonders Enclave as card advantage engines that work well with fires. So this particular list also got five wins and an MFO qualifier, and I've tried it myself and it's a lot of fun, so if you haven't given this one a go, you definitely should. And it plays one of my car uh, favorite cards, Questing Beast, so might as well give it a go. The next companion is Karuga. Another fires list. Okay, you got me, I love fires too much, so sorry for all the fires decks, but this one is basically the classic list that I was playing pre Ikoria with a sweet extra card almost for free. So Karuga fits very nicely into this deck, providing a decent threat and crazy source of card advantage when you need it. Narsed of the Ancient Way is another nice Ikoria addition to the deck. So for a while, these decks were also playing Shark Typhoon, as cycling didn't count as casting uh, a card for fires, but that st strategy seems to have performed worse uh, than just executing the normal fires plan consistently. So this is probably the deck that I am most uh, comfortable playing. I played a lot of fires uh, before Ikoria came out, and um, yeah, so this is definitely one of my favorites as well. Next up is Garuda. So I think that Garuda decks kind of got overhyped when the expansion first dropped because um, they haven't been performing too well since. So here is a list that got four wins and an MFO qualifier earlier in the season. It focuses on ramping to Garuda and then chaining the companions enter the battlefield effect by either hitting more Garuda, Spark doubles a copy Garuda, or Prince and Thassa, which can blink it to keep the chain going. 
So Destiny Spinner out of the sideboard can help make sure Garuda resolves, and Broodmoth offers some protection against sweepers. The deck can be really explosive when it comes to generating a big board quickly, but it is also very susceptible to running out of steam. So next up is Gigantha. I really love Gigantha, I think it's one of my favorite companions for sure. So I could show you yet another red-black sack list that runs Gigantha as the companion because it just so happens to fit the companion condition, uh, but I'd rather show you this list because I think it's going to be more fun, so I hope that's okay. So while it probably isn't the most competitive deck, I do like some of the things that it is trying to accomplish. It plays Golos to get use out of the Gigantha mana. It plays lots of high value mutate creatures and Kethys to take advantage of having so many legendaries and graveyard filling mechanics in the deck. And speaking of the small dudes who fill your yard, uh, they're also great mutate targets. So this deck, it looks really cool and a lot of fun. So I thought that I would highlight it. Next companion on the list is Umori the Collector. So here's an awesome take on a mutate deck. To satisfy Umori's condition, the deck is entirely creatures, which works great with Mutate because Mutate only works with creatures anyway. You also get some spell-like effects off the Mutate, such as bouncing creatures with Shore Shark or killing them with Dirge Bat. Mutate also works best when done in mass because the effects stack on itself, uh, which can lead to a chain of effects off of a single Mutate. The deck also makes great use out of the Stone Coil Serpent and Knight of the Ebon Legion, both of which are commonly have counters on them, further boosting the stats of the mutated creature. Stone Coil Serpent also has a multitude of keywords that make the mutated creature very hard to deal with, especially the protection from multicolored. Next up is Zerda. So this list isn't as powerful as the Lurus cycling decks, but Zerda will make all of your more expensive cyclers cost one, which can allow you to play some of the more expensive cyclers and make better use out of the cycling lands. This version plays Yodaro as another way to close out games if you can't quite get there with Zenith Flare and Foxes. So this list looks pretty cool too. Um, if you have tried it before, let me know in the comments as I haven't tried it out myself yet. Lastly is Lutri. So it's actually pretty hard to find Lutri decks, and that's probably because a deck full of one-ofs just isn't as consistent as a deck that is allowed to run uh, multiple copies of cards. So even with the extra card from Lutri's companionship, these decks struggle to execute on a game plan. So I built my own, and I only had uh, a little bit of time to test it out, so uh, this is where I ended up. Um, Esper has a lot of powerful cards right now, and many of them are cheap enough to be copied by Lutri. So while I don't think this deck will be shining in any competitions anytime soon, uh, it is fun to play uh, and enough for me to give the cute little otter a few games before shelving him. All right, folks, that is all 10 companions. So I hope you enjoyed looking over each of the companions with me and seeing how I would build them in today's meta. Some companions are more versatile than others, and there are certainly more archetypes that I could include in this video. So let me know what you think of the decks that I chose and which companions you've been using in the comments. And if you liked this video, make sure to like and subscribe. And thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks. The Lutri deck is very long. It's very long deck code.